I don't know what super tetanus is, but that does not sound very good. It's cybernetic. <laughs> <laughs> I am your complex and excitable storyteller, AP Gaming Real. Some have described me as mysterious and eloquent. I, you know, I still haven't deleted reset 60 FPS on Sea of Thieves. I'm just going to do that right now. It's not working. Okay. Not now. Nope. Nope. Uh, welcome to episode 16 of this show. Some called this show 2020 plus plus a uh oh. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I think instead of deleting uh, the Sea of Thieves thing, I deleted the name of the show. Uh, yep, I did. That's exactly what I did. Fortunately, I have the power of Control Z on my side. Uh, 2020 plus plus, <laughs> a Cyberpunk 2020 second edition game, episode 16. You hold control and hit Z and hear a soft click. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last tabletop RPG stream of the year, but Ooh. maybe I'll do a stream of something tomorrow. Like fake grand or well, no, the servers will be down. Are you still in bone zone in territory? Is that over? No, now? bone zone is over. I got you know, I didn't go as hard on <laughs> Well, I just realized go I'm just going to leave. Full I didn't go as hard on the bone zone as I thought I was going to because I didn't need the XP cards. I got enough bones to cover what I needed, and uh, I just didn't go nuts about it. So uh, you left the bar You left the zone unburned. Uh, listen, I boned the zone harder than anybody else in the AP Gaming Real community. But I'll be I mean, honest, that's not I difficult. didn't spend all my time boning. I uh, I got out. I did. You know, I had a life. Playing you, know, you can only play pieces of your heart for so long and is that what you're spending your time doing limo you just want to straight up admit to it i, I j just was saying you know okay hey man look some people have spent a good 30 hours in their game okay you you oh. would know yeah well, the hard puzzles are hard okay takes me like 20 minutes to beat the hard too, puzzles, you know? too like... easy these jokes, these jokes are just, just such gonna let it pass. Just gonna let it pass. Oh God. Oh. I... <clears throat> what what has happened since the last episode? I don't know that anything Christmas. significant has happened. Yeah, I mean Christmas is just Christmas. Oh no. I didn't get a PS5, so you have but to understand that AP's resumed his war on Christmas. So it's true. I have resumed my war on Christmas. You can celebrate Christmas. You can start putting decorations out on December 1st. And you may celebrate Christmas starting on December 12th. You still have a Christmas tree up? We're, we're in a battle now. We're, I, I stopped the war on Christmas this year because 2020 has been tough. Oh, but man, 2020 is about to be over. You can, you can keep it up till Epiphany before you've yeah, got Yeah, 6th like... of January, mate. That's, when it, that's where the 12th day of Christmas is. Winter I don't. I don't season. believe in y'all's twelve days. The twelve days lead up to Christmas. No, They're not the twelve after days the after. That's it's. That's uh, only in your old style. I. This is the new Christmas. Okay. <laughs> we're we're in totalitarian last... Christmas now. Where Listen, I'm at, dude... winter lasts until mid March, so that's when people have their. Yeah, Christmas. exactly. That's that's how I feel about it too, uh, uh, Andrew. Because you know, think about it. You spend all that time putting up the Christmas lights. You're not gonna go out in minus thirty and take them down just because it's January first, okay? Glimo, let's no, see your Arthur intro. Said so. Arthur said so. You it's actually to. Arthur's war tradition, to be honest. I listen. There, you, there was a time where I believe very strongly in tradition, but then I realized that when people say tradition, they really just mean beating the shit out of other people. So, <sighs> well, speaking of mistradition, it's super weird that I, you know, don't have my twelfth night costume ready I, but, what is so. this 12th night thing i've literally never heard of this before because you know you weren't a good catholic recovering or otherwise you're correct i was not raised catholic um yeah because that's that is what the 12 days of christmas is i mean you know we can get into the whole thing about whether or not the 25th is really days the of self-flagellation but, but it's but it's mm -hmm. supposed to be that you know in in the in the christian ethos it's it's that it took 12 days from when jesus was born till the what three wise men showed up so the wise men showed up on january 6th so that's the 12 days of christmas i guess one of them showed up with myrrh man how are you gonna be like Phew, myrrh yeah just mm, 
fragrant wax, I think. And then they Man. finally get, Thank you. Thank you they for the, get the frankincense kid. and never mind the myrrh next time. They finally um, get the kid to sleep and then my namesake walks up like you want to hear a drum solo. <laughs> You're just upset, AP, that no one gave you six keys of laying today. Oh, James, I don't know what that means. You're right. I am upset, though, now that you said it. Are you familiar with the 12 Days of Christmas song? Come on. The uh, partridges in a pear yeah. tree? So this, today, today in the US is the sixth day, which is six geese a laying. No. No one then, gave me any geese a laying. I, I'm sorry. Well, <sighs> six geese a laying your time. Over here, it's still five. Go. No, 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 no. Ring. No, no. I, where I, where I am, sorry. It's seven songs to sing. I, I already corrected for your backward time zone. I'm, I'm on the seven songs right now. I have giving anybody 13 waterfowl is an act of violence anyway, so. <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, uh, I'm done with work for 2020. So that's that's plus. Um, oh, you get like what twelve hours of respite before you start working. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, you know, now that I'm a consultant, so, you know, I'm actually like completely done till till the fourth. So that's that's nice. Um, a lot else? of people off until the fourth. It's a good weekend. I've gone through almost three pounds of coffee in the 10 days that I've had my new espresso machine. Wow, Jesus. Calm down, man. You know. Um, Are you dying now? Like, what? <laughs> twitch, 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 twitch. Um, I mean, my wife and I, but, you know, yeah. There's... I mean, if you got good coffee, it's fucking... I might have a problem, but that's I mean, okay. it just sounds like a lot of coffee. I don't know how much coffee... It's like it's like two and a half cups. I do I do I do about seven grams per shot. That, that sounds, sounds like, a, like a lot of coffee, but I have no. In in college, there was an entire... <laughs> yeah. So for, per per espresso shot, the, my puck is about seven grams. Yeah, like the body can. Are you a hot? A so you're grinding shit coffee. yourself? Is that what you're doing? Well, you're actually super grinding. automatic, so it grinds when I push the button. Nice. So, so how are you measuring the, the puck size? Then? Well, it's like, it's the actual, like, vessel only. I mean, push. in theory, I could measure it afterwards after the machine kicks it out, but I've got a little thing on the front that I tell it how much to grind, and yeah. uh, I push the button oh, for seven grams. Oh, you can do it by grams. grams. Okay. Do you, Most do of the you... coffee machines I've used have just, like, a vague, a vague estimation. Like, here you go, do you want a big one, or do you want a small one? <laughs> Do you have to do like the like tap down the the grains or the espresso powder I, yourself? Or I don't. It does it all. It, does it, all. For, it all all inside. Nice, all the, nice. the, the, yep. the little the little Italian elves inside the gaja. Uh, Let me ask you this, Glimo. Yes. This is the most important part. Yes. Do you have a milk frother separate? Do you have a separate re reservoir for it? Does it, it automatically is... put hot water into your uh, into your coffee if you want an americano? Uh, it, if I want an, I can do, I can do a long espresso all in okay. with one button. If I want a, a, a full on Americano, I have to move the cup over to the hot water dispenser. Okay. So, and the yeah. hot water dispenser, uh, is modular and comes out and the milk frother goes into that. And that way the milk never go enters the machine. Mm -hmm. So... So the milk never contaminates the coffee and you never have like spoiled milk solids in the coffee reservoir. So you sound like you might have a very similar machine to me. Uh, what What is the name of your espresso it's, machine? It's the Gaja Anima. <laughs> I just killed Dave. <laughs> is it really called the Anima? Yeah, I, I heard it too, Anima, A-N. Coffee makes me animal. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah. So the let's move this conversation animal. along. You got anything else uh, going on, Glimo? Um, it's my birthday this weekend. Wow! Congratulations. Hey, Thank you. Birthday. Um, <laughs> so if if any of Arthur's patrons who are are playing in Solaris Knights want to buy my character jump the Jumping Jack SPA for for my birthday, you know mm -hmm. that'd be awesome. 
Wow, that was, a really, I... that was a good, smooth transition to selling out. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. I'll tell you what. People will do it if you if you're named the Jumping Jack, aka Birthday Boy. Perfect. I will I will post it in the Discord later. You have to come into the ring ready to blow out some fucking candles, bro. <laughs> Drummer boy, what do you got? I don't even know anymore, man. <laughs> I know what you've got. Speaking of Solaris Knights and Drummer Boy, two, how could you combine these two things? The oh, yeah. new Solaris Knights intro is Drummer Boy music. Yeah, it's the really yeah. awesome. It's the mock ESPN thing I did for a podcast that never paid me, so just gave it to AP. <laughs> I used it immediately, and I knew exactly what I needed to use it for. Yeah. Because he's no longer called uh, the artist formerly known as Little Drac. Now he's called William Double Double. Nice. His name somehow got worse rather than better. Why Double Double? Because his name is William Wyndham Williamson the Third. Oh. So it's WWW. It's not a not a Tim Hortons reference. I don't know anything about Tim Hortons. He doesn't they know about the Double Double. Team. Double double is too cream too sugar. Okay, that sounds like it's, a coffee thing. It's the most popular. That's what Tim Hortons is. As Tim he, I thought yeah, it served know, poutine or Timbits. No man. No, no. Tim Hortons doesn't serve poutine. Okay, sure. you could tell I don't know anything and, about Tim Hortons. How, how is it? How is it that I lived in San Francisco and I had more Tim Hortons than the Americans? Do? Hey, listen, I know about Brumbies. Okay, the Australians. I think that puts me on a different level. All right. I don't need to is know about like Canadian a, like a, breakfast services when I know about Australia ones. <laughs> Brumbies is just a type of horse. What are you referring to when you say Brumby? There was like a the there's like a place called Brumbies. You get yeah, brekkie he's at talking Brumbies. About a bak- it might have been a, a, a bakery in South Might have been a Queensland. Might have been a Queensland thing, maybe. Probably because that's where I was. Yeah. yeah. We had it in we had it in Cairns and we had it in South yep. Australia as well. Cairns. Yep. Fucking Brumbies, good then. Yeah, I'm just trying Brumbies, to imagine man. what what Tim Hortons routine would be like, and that's revolting. Wow. Well, okay. Highly what else you got, Drummer Boy? Uh, I made some. Well, I made some music a while ago that finally got released on Bandcamp and Spotify. The final Star Wars tune for for roleplay, and I think that might be the last roleplay song ever. Question mark. Um. Yeah, I think. You, yeah. Yep. I think that's. I'm just waiting to see if like one of their characters dies and they want me to do another character theme for them or whatever. But if that's not the case, then this is probably the end. And then I'll wait till the whole thing's over. Then I'll make a compilation album so people can easily buy the show's music that they want on Bandcamp and all that stuff. But uh, made a little jam with the synthesizer. I finally updated the firmware to an unofficial version, a black market firmware. Ooh. I didn't even know you should do that. Yeah. There's a dude that completely like reverse engineered some stuff and unlocked some new features that Korg refused to for some reason. So now it does velocity sensitive per note, which means I can send notes from the computer with different velocities and actually change like one of the parameters on the synth itself, which wasn't possible on the synth. Synth. That's pretty rad. AP, one of the Canadians in chat is backing you up and saying that Tim Hortons did do poutine at one point. Did they? Oh shit! Get wrecked! Yeah, but that get wrecked. I don't know anything about Tim Hortons, and I was still more correct than the people that go there. That might have been that might have been like a location specific one. That's okay. It's all right to just admit that I was right for once. It's okay. It happens rarely. You can be right, but that's exactly the same as Taco Bell doing a fucking pizza, and you know it. Taco Bell's been doing (laughs) pizza for like 40 years, man. What do you think a Mexican pizza is? Didn't they just take that off the menu? Oh my god, did they? That's literally the only redeemable option on their entire menu. (laughs) I don't think they have that anymore. I don't think they have like the potato wrap thingies, whatever, either. (sighs) Anyways, uh, I've been doing that kind of stuff. I'm taking it pretty easy until the new year because I don't have anything to do and I don't have, I don't want to bother anyone that's like, like the Nerd or Die thing is currently still going through promotion, but everyone's on holiday, so... 
I'm not going to bother anyone on their holiday being like, Hey, where's the promotion? Bro? Um, been watching the expanse season five is out. Well, half of season five is out. Mm. Um, yeah. The expanse good. has rapidly shifted its focus in a way that I don't think many shows have. Yeah. Season four was much less like a big setup. Season five is now when those setups are paying off and it's episode four was insane. Episode four was like the big payoff from season four, like the end of season four. Mm. And now uh, season six is the end of the the run they're saying. So now it's like ramping up to the end. Um, A lot of the expanse reminds me of a game called Aurora two which is like this weird... <laughs> you know what i'm talking about that yeah uh but the other thing is i was thinking of the expanse like two or three uh... days ago and about how my favorite episode is the one where i think something's happening on mars and they're like you have to do crime on mars blah me guys and i'm like Ugh, that, this storyline is not for me but they intersect it with the story about the guy who invented the the jump drives that they have where mm. he's he's an engineer and they're like, well, he took every possible precaution and safety on this vessel and turned it off. <laughs> and I was like, I can't tell if this is the most or least engineer thing that has ever happened. Did you get to like, oh man, the scene that like, I think it was season, season three. I must three. have been at the end of season four, I think. I'm. Let me try to see if I can say where I was without spoiling too much. The, the ring... The planet did they go, inside did they the go end of that season. Games? Yeah. That's uh, season three. Wow, I'm super far behind then. Season four is they go through a ring gate and try to, like, to a planet. The yes, that's the season. Yes, they go to a okay. planet. There's yeah. like miners there and like a total sociopath, and the sociopath's like, I'm going to take control of the entire world. And I'm like, Jesus, why haven't they just shot this guy like eight times? <laughs> You're. He's the Ramsey Bolton of the Expanse. Yeah, but like, and he also gets his ass kicked at the, like the very last scene. It's like, is your leg okay? It's fine. <laughs> Why? Because I don't want to hit a cripple. Wow. And then Amos beats the hell out of him. Also, finally, five seasons in, we get an Amos backstory episode. Wow. That and is big. Uh, it's kind of fucking crazy. I mean, they've implied yeah. that he's been lying about his past for the last couple of seasons so yep you have no idea oh well, uh, now he does i'm not i'm not saying anything more but if you want to find out fucking episode three of the new season well he sure doesn't talk like somebody from baltimore so actually i think it's episode two of the new season yeah anyway the new season's very good uh if you're into the expanse and like sci-fi shit Watch it. It's good. Got anything uh, else? Just Genshin Impact and Destiny still. Just rolling <laughs> on through. I want to tell you, I uh, I listen to Critical Role now when I'm driving because I'm caught up on just about everything else, mm -hmm. which means that I get YouTube ads that are like, you know, really interspersed and half of them are for David Perdue and Georgia, which makes me really wonder... Where the hell YouTube thinks that I live that I want mm -hmm. a Purdue ad? Um, but I got like a five and a half minute long Genshin Impact ad. And by the end of it, I wanted to pull my car over to skip the ad because I was so infuriated that Genshin Impact would take five minutes of my goddamn life to tell me about some frosty zombie girl. What the fuck? I don't know. They're like, she's a zombie. She's very forgetful. But she's cute. You'll like her. Go roll for her. She's a, she's got cold element. She can summon the Herald of Frost. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. They're like, you'll, oh. don't worry. You'll like her when she gets to tier four celestial, whatever. And I'm like, I don't know what any of this means. I, I, I'm I not the target I'm audience. The tier four celestial on anything is a fucking nightmare. So good going to whoever nah. does that shit. I've got I've got like six characters, five or six characters at C four to C six. Yeah, I mean. Just because rolling on banners, you're like, you're hoping for the five star, but you get dupes and the dupes are like uh, celestial level, give you mm -hmm. upgrades to, his, to abilities and whatever. Um, but yeah, just the big thing with Genshin now, 
I'm glad I hit the new content when I did because now I hit level 50 adventure level, which means I can finally boost everyone to their max possible level. Okay. I can get I can get everyone to 90. Because you have like tiers where you can ascend people and then ascension costs X amount of material. You you play gotchas, you know this. Yep. I don't know the specifics of Genshin Impact. It's the same system, to, but... just a different wrapper. <sighs> That's it though. Just a little bit of synthesizer stuff. The Expanse, which is episode five, came out today, which I haven't watched. I'll probably watch that tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah. Still waiting for after The Expanse is done, then I'll hit up Mandalorian. Okay. Mm. Dave, what do you got? Uh, my dog is acting like a fucking drugo right now because for Christmas he got a uh, smoked sheep's foot or pig foot. And uh, he's been eating it at night and only at night for whatever reason. So now that I'm up at night, he's like over at me being like, eh, eh, eh. so <laughs> I just took a photo of him just being absolutely fucking bananas. Um, what's the, what's the status on the candy cane mountain? How far are you through the candy canes? Oh, look, I fucking gave up on that shit, my dude. I think, I think, <laughs> I think there's like, I think there's a good, like I had people over and my sister-in-law is a bit of a fucking garbage dump, I would say for food. <laughs> like, like literally I made her dinner. I made everyone dinner. She took seconds. And then when that wasn't enough, she raided the fridge for previous night's dinners. Oh, she's that. got she's got hollow legs. She's an endless void. Oh no, there are ends to her. They're just quite large. Um, <laughs> but uh, on the her way out, she was like, "Oh, can I take a couple of candy canes with me?" And I'm like, "Fuck it, please <laughs> take some." So she grabs a handful of the fucking things, and like a handful, not just like a you know, I'll take two. It's like yoink, here's a handful. Um, and there's still like 50 of the fucking things in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to eat these fucking things. Uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, life's been pretty good over here. I mean, um, the winter sale has been really good to me. Uh, I will say that much. And we have a bundle going right now, and I think we just passed $16,000 of sales. For that, Congrats, which is really man. good. Thank you. I mean, I don't see all of that money, obviously. There's like 10 other people in the bundle with me, but still, that's... I mean, a... but bundles, I'm surprised how well they how well they do. Like, I was in a sound bundle with Nerd or Die, and it was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, uh, especially when you get a decent percentage out of it. It works pretty good. Yep. Sorry, only 15,000, not 16,000. We're getting there, though. And there's four days left of that if you're interested in that. That's over on Itch. It's called the Naughty or Nice Hund Holiday Bundle. Um, and there's a lot of really good stuff. Oh, you're Ronan, in the nice part you... of the bundle, right? Yeah, I would say that my stuff is more nice than most of the really? stuff. Really? Like, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's got to be a filthy bundle. I mean, like, they got, like... So there's a VR game in there that has, like, actual like scanned porn stars in the game and stuff like it's it's insane the type of shit that you can do these days so um and there's like a there's like a sex version of river city girls in there and stuff like that it's it's weird it's a weird bundle um but you know there's lots of good shit in there too uh for the same stuff you know we're doing close to like 300 400 sales a day which is nice. insane um yeah and you know like just putting together stuff for next year and um uh, the community discord has passed like 900 people now um so you know we're getting uh, got a lot of community members and shit like that too and you know i'm doing things like making 
Discord emotes and stuff like that. So it's. Um, I'm doing that I, too. I will admit, I mm. only bought the game to support my friend, but it is surprisingly addictive. Ah, on the, on the there puzzles, it is. The puzzle side. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, my my goal mm -hmm. for making that game was to make like an actual like because most video game jigsaws. It's a weird thing to say, but like, because I played a lot of them in like research for this, but most of them are just like, you know, a sidebar with like, here are the closest puzzle pieces and you just sort of take them like it's made for children basically right um so my goal when i was making the game was to make it like basically like a jigsaw experience where you like you have to take the puzzle pieces out then like organize them and then like put them together sort of thing so Find we the do have some pieces yeah that sort of shit right like not most made for video children games... made for making children yeah wow <laughs> why so isn't drummer most... boy on your marketing staff I don't think he'd want to be on that market. So much so. shit post. All my shit is shit posts, and none of them, like ten percent of them, land. All I'm you know, hearing dude. is social media manager. One hour a day of work, dude. Like the amount of shit posting I do that actually makes sales is insane. Like my entire marketing strategy is memes, and it works really well. Um, so many, so many voice actresses are like, "What well, you making another meme? I'm in. Let's go." And I'm like, hmm. "Okay, <laughs> okay." <laughs> So, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like it's surprisingly, uh, good. And like, I've shown people, um, I've shown people the next game and they're just like, damn son, that shit looks good. I'm like, thank you. I don't know anything about, uh, you know, fairies or anything like that, but apparently it's like, it's what people want. So, oh. You know. Just random Top Gun furries. I saw today on Twitter that the cops are now in intimidated by furries. They they made an open letter that like furries are intimidating us. Please stop. Put it what, in the game. In what way? Nope. Nope. No. Dave, you got anything else? I'll send you a link to an article later. Mm. It's very funny though. Like, dude, you're well, I mean made of a giant purple raccoon. Grow up. So, I mean, uh, you know, I'm probably looking next year to do two, three games releases, maybe. We'll see. Um, it really depends on a bunch of stuff. Um, and, you know, um, every game needs, like, t like the reason why Peace is, is so enjoyable isn't because of the Jigsaw stuff. It's, like, the wrappings around it is, like, how polished all the experiences are how much uh music goes into it the sound effects like basically the the feeling and vibe that you get playing the game that's sort of like the overall goal for these sorts of things is supposed to just encapsulate a feeling um you're saying it's right. more than a feeling yeah okay. you could say that all right um, just confirming uh that's you know more than and, a you know feeling. we got we got the OST coming out in a couple of days mm -hmm. and um yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time to be a dev. We'll see how we see how long that lasts, though. So, yeah, and I just signed a contract with Nutaku, and we're gonna get the game out on a lot of places. And yeah, it should be good. Okay, should be good. James, what do you got? I've actually had a pretty busy couple of days since uh, we did Rogue Trader on uh, on Saturday. Uh, I finally went to get a babysitter yesterday, so my wife and I went out for dinner and a movie. So we went and saw um, Wonder Woman eighty four. It was terrible. Uh, yeah, I said to my wife, "Truly, like, at least dinner, at least dinner was good." Um, I, I didn't rate I've them, seen DC movies and I've generally all rated them very poorly. Wonder Woman eighty four is actually the worst DC movie so far. The first, the first one was was very good though. It I was think. incredible. It, 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 it was almost a, a good movie apartment. on its own. That's it. Yeah. So uh, disappointing, but you know, so at least we had a nice dinner out and we didn't have to spend it with the kids. Uh, and then now today it's like only just after midday and I've already had like a four mile run and then build a trampoline and my Oculus quest two arrived as well. So <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm, <laughs> unfortunately I put it on right after having done like exercise and build a trampoline outside in the sun. So, Oh no, but, you got but, it all uh, sweaty and humid. It's fro it, it fogged up straight oh, away. Oh boy. <laughs> oh James, you've literally ruined it. I here I am. I'm just like, man, you know what? I spent the whole day shit posting memes. 
<laughs> prepping for today's game and cooking nachos for eight hours. And James is like, well, I did everything a soldier would do on the battlefield. And then I also played with my Oculus Rift. And I was like, what is this insanity? So the first thing I did when I bought my Oculus Rift was change the, the inlay. Uh, because you need to get it to rest of, on your nose. Yeah. No, 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 no. Instead of wicking away sweat, it like soaks it in. So, um, if you ever do like, go, Oh, cool. You want to have a turn and then you give it to someone else. It's like, it's like putting on a fucking sponge, Ooh. you know, like, Ew. um, I'm not sure that's a device. So it would be like giving somebody else your glasses. That just seems wrong. That's right. Yeah. I mean, one of my kids said, what's that? I'm like mine. So that shut that conversation down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you about it when you're older. That should have been the go-to. <laughs> it's also like one of the things I'd recommend looking into if you want to is like a VR. It's a it's a company called VR Cover, and they make these amazing face covers that have like like nose stuff as well. So like, because you don't really know until you change it, but there's like light bleed that comes up from underneath the nose. Yeah, I, like I've noticed that when, when it's sitting comfortably, I can see the light around my nose. So. Uh, if I if I push it down, then it, it's like sort of putting pressure. I don't want to put pressure. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, like one of the tricks also. Do you know the IPD space between your eyes? No. Okay. So in the device, you can like manually move like the I, eye. I saw that. Yeah. 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 So it goes between seventy-eight and sixty-five. Um, so if you're like. And then the second one is like, um, was it 70 or something like that? Like in terms of centimeters. So try and measure it, try and get someone to measure your pupil distance. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it's less than 70 you can, though. So, you know how I like clicks in, so you yeah. can actually like manually half slide it between the two things and it will stay in that position. So, um, if you need to like manually, like if, you, if it's not super, on point you can like manually change it and not click it into the settings and it will stay there so yeah what i have found though is uh so so this is something i get from my father but we both have quite sort of squinted eyes when like normally so my eyes are quite quite narrow and i found that when i was actually playing the game on it it, it was helpful to actually like deliberately like widen my eyes so i'm trying to imagine oh. now like what I, what I would look like if it helmet off with me constantly you know hmm. wide-eyed everywhere oh, and the other thing is yeah. it's really hard to focus on stuff you aren't looking directly at yeah you have to move your head a lot you know speaking of vr after you you've been talking about it a lot you inspired me to get my uh my beat saber on and then i remembered that i'm i'm really bad at beat saber i can barely beat levels on normal <laughs> i mean the answer to that is but beat saber is so keep good practicing it's so good though it is so but good just keep practicing i mean are you are you using mods by the way the only mod i have is like additional songs yeah okay as long as you're doing that and they're all every fine. single one is like hard extremely hard super duper ludicrous and i'm like man i can barely do the thing where they send you like a backhand cross like this i'm like oh jesus you want me to do that like you gotta put 15 times like, in a row you gotta be like the uh i forget what the martial art is it's like staff and like two stick martial art but there's a, no, there's someone a did that. Yeah, they did the Darth Maul. They attached theirs to a pole and then yeah. did like a like bicycle wheeling for songs. There's, she was incredible. There's like there's a there's a gymnast, a girl on TikTok who's like famous for like doing these crazy routines with like bow staffs and these things. You got to basically be her for the super super hard ones. So there's like um, one of the things you can do. There's a program called Beat Saver. Yes, that's what um, I have. And you can manually set it up to automatically download stuff that matches filters so one of the things like i i started with the steam version of beat saber but then i swapped over to like the oculus version because you know we don't have very good wi-fi in the house um but what you can do is you can make the device automatically download like because my wife started off on normal and then she progressed to hard and she progressed to expert right um but so I originally had to like find a bunch of songs to download on normal and you can just set it up so that it automatically downloads not like a bunch of songs that meet filters, like, you know, have like a couple hundred thousand plays and has a normal version of the song. Um, 
so that she could play the same song again and again and again just on harder difficulties. And the system automatically does that. It's it's like super good. It's I, I used it to up play, was a pain in the ass, but yeah. I used to play a lot of rock band. Um, like I was a big mm -hmm. fan of rock band. And I always said, like with rock band, if you can play the drums well in rock band, you can probably play the drums well in real life. If you can sing well in rock band, you can sing well in real life. If you can play the guitar well, you can probably play simple Simon. And it's like <laughs> nothing like playing an actual guitar in reality. But <laughs> my, my wife did get me the keyboard add-on for rock band. Um, because I actually learned to play piano as a child, like like to a relatively high level that I, I found I had to put onto like expert mode super hard to actually be challenged with the keyboard and rock band. So, but that was good. It was like, it was, it was fun to be doing something that was like, actually, you know, r rather than going, Oh, this, you know, this, this medium is really hard on, on other instruments. Uh, do something that's actually good at. Mm -hmm. I couldn't so, we'll do like, like, I got bored so fast doing like hard mode on those games. Cause like the, the challenge is getting your right and left hand to like sync up yeah. and playing guitar for, like six years before that is like, yeah, this is, that's not the challenge anymore. Now the challenge is to hit five buttons instead of hitting 24 frets. Yeah. You guys remember DJ here? Dude. Yeah, I'll put that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who played a little, uh, little USB turntable to actually play the game. Yeah. Oh, that's so <laughs> dumb. Although there's a, uh, there's a game now that's like a DJ card game that looks really interesting. Hmm? Like it's a it's a card game, so you get like a hand of cards. The other person plays a card, and it's like a beat or something. And you play a card, and it's like a melody, and the other card is a bass, and like you can switch back and forth like that. It's a harmonics game too, so like it's they're they know what they're doing. It's interesting. Okay. James, get anything never else? Heard of it. No, that's all I got. I don't understand the way I want Cyberpunk. I've been playing lots of Cyberpunk too, but you know we don't want to, we don't want to go down that rabbit that's hole. True, so. That's true. And just after the skip introductions, I just want to mention again that Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84 it. is absolutely terrible and just don't waste your time watching it. You will regret having lost two and a half hours of your life. Oh my God, it's that long of a movie? It's incredibly long and they could have cut it into half and it still would have been bad. But uh, go and see Shadow in the Clouds. I, I got I got a preview screen of that that comes out I think first of first of January in the Interesting. US. Interesting. Oh, and go watch. Sorry, go on. As I say, it's a girl from Kick Ass in a in a World oh. War II movie. Mm. But it's it's How a World War II with, a, with with a horror bent. <clears throat> I mean, she's an adult now. I don't know her exact age, but it, it's yeah. it's got a very Cthulhu esque vibe to it. I think. Go watch that new George Clooney movie on Netflix as well. That thing's pretty good too. Okay. Meanwhile back when we were playing cyberpunk all of you are meeting uh dante fiero you've been stopped outside your offices to meet your new secretary alphonse gore who is uh oh, yeah. a man who has had his cyber limbs removed but he has been given a cyber wheelchair as a result which appears to have some level of functionality and a prosthetic arm replacement and uh, he appears to have no memory of his encounter with you, although you've told him that you were helpful to him. You enter into Dante's office as the light above it goes from red to green, and he is on the phone speaking with someone saying, no, Major, that is not what I asked you to do. What I asked you to do is what I want you to do, okay? I do not pay you to think, and no, I am not going to get cyberware so that we can have this communication in my head. We will speak at the level that I am speaking at, because if we were speaking at the level I think at, you would not be able to keep up. Do exactly as I have asked and eliminate them, and I don't want to hear any more about this shitty fucking island. And he, he slaps the foldable cell phone shut. In the corner of the room, sitting quietly, is a mid-twenties Asian woman of maybe Chinese descent, when conservative clothes, dark cut suit, uh, just kind of waiting. Dante goes, ah, you are all here. Fantastic. Someone tries to call Bones Brain. It's that video from a little while ago, but like, dude, playing a hand drum, the cat jam going on the side. Gentlemen, will you join me on the rooftop on the 55th floor? 
I have oh, a proposition for you that I assume Mr. Bishop and uh, Wolfgang have spoken to you about. We do, have not. Do, do, do I have to prod uh, Colton along? <laughs> Is he white knuckling the, 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 the door frame? I don't like heights. Funny given our last mission, I mean, jumping across a thing into a plane. All right. But... <laughs> so Dante has already left, assuming you'll follow him. Uh, the woman just remains seated in her chair. I'll follow. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll go over then. Yep. I'll go, but I'm staying like center building as far <laughs> as much as I can. Okay. It, well, there's a there's a table set up with a tablecloth and like a white, um, sorry, white cloth and then like a butler and a server. Uh, Pascal, someone bumps into you at this point. And it's like, oh, sorry. Like when you're, when you walk out, like they hit you from behind. It's not like injuresome or anything, but they just kind of bounce off you. I immediately pat myself down to see if anything's missing. Okay. Sure. Make a uh, <laughs> perception check. Uh, awareness notice. Sure. Your kidneys. They took your kidneys. <laughs> they just got 18. them. 18. Uh, you are not missing your kidneys or any other things that you believe that you might have. Okay. Uh, do what I have about new... things being added to him like a tracking device? He does not notice anything like that. I mean, I will our... point out, was was it Colton or was it Pascal that got tagged with the... At the... Oh, no, sorry, that was my other game. That was the Patreon game where they got tagged. Do we have our, our other gear? Like, do I have my new arm? Do you? If I, I gave it I gave it to you. So... If I have it, it's on me because I need to, I need to, like... Get this uh, chipware thing in my head. If it's on, on, it's on. Great. Yeah. So this is your new combat arm? Yeah. So I assume but, I I just assume I need to have it on in order for the chipware to start working. Has, has it got obvious weapons on the outside or is it all concealed sort of stuff? It's from I mean, Militech, I'm... so it's presumably like Oh, it probably has a giant white Militech logo on it. Logo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but have you got like like a wrist fricade or something like that, the rocket launcher or like what 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 makes it a combat arm? I You've got the pop-up shoulder the pop laser, the pop-up laser, and the pop-up missile. But they're but they they they're do both pop -ups. fold down. Both, okay, yeah. No, right, yeah. okay. Yeah, but it's do not. Have... It's very obviously not my normal medic arm. Do you have um, like reinforced monofilaments in there or anything like that? No, yeah. it's just armored like my other one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Uh... There's... I do have a, I do have another bag though, like I have like one of those shoulder bags that I keep my other arm in because they're both they're hot swappable. So I'm gonna keep it on me. <laughs> Why don't you just get like a another section to like put the arm into? Because that costs a lot and surgery. But think of how many more guns you can hold. Yeah, it's a big humanity cost too, having more than more than two limbs, or more than two arms. Yeah. Yeah, it only costs a turn to swap them out. So mm. I've just got a, I've just got an arm carrying thing on my back. I'm, it's probably like incorporated somehow into my skateboard carrier, like my little skateboard carrier hook thing. Because that's <laughs> that works like a, like Kratos's. I'm just, axe, I'm just axe imagining. Hook. Like when your arm's not being used, you ride on it because it's a skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Just put wheels on my other arm. Now nah, that's my handbrake, but I'm. Um, All right, Arthur, please continue. Oh, you ready to go? Okay. Um. There is a lot of equipment up here, which appears to be some sort of hall screens along the edge that will display what everything should actually look like, uh, but act as a windbreak and prevent anybody from like reading your your lips or getting any sort of, you know, like satellite imagery on this place. Um, 
seems like it's a secure place to talk despite it being what would look like an open air roof restaurant. You do notice that there is one part of the roof that's been casually sectioned off for pushing people off of it right at the same splash zone that Dante's uh, 54th floor balcony is. So he's got a double decker push off building yes set up you know sometimes you just need to push people off of the real roof you know special occasions mm -hmm. so there's a sort of uh multi-course french meal being served and dante says gentlemen as i uh as i intimated to your colleagues several days ago there is a second series of jobs I would like you to pull off that will experience a higher level of danger and thus a higher level of compensation due to you. A separate contract for negotiation. And it is about that series of jobs that I wish to speak to you today. I understand Wolfgang, as part of his compensation, would like to make sure that... Uh, he and his family are taken care of and out of our Arasaka custody. Sorry, Epi, did the Chinese woman follow us up as well or she stayed in She the stayed in her chair. Okay. He's probably dead. It was really weird to just watch someone continue sitting in somebody else's office in the corner in a chair, not moving. She's, she's in timeout. It's creepy. better than being on the ground. Uh, the arrow has hired a, the arrow hired on a seat warmer, the human seat warmer to keep it. Yes, her body is the same dimensions as mine. Don't think about it too much. He has what a body ten and also attractiveness ten. So unless she's shaped like the rock, I don't think she's gonna be able to act as a seat warmer for him. So uh Dante says. To be specific, since some of you look like you maybe have not heard about this before, the kind of jobs I'm wanting to run are ones that involve going after the internet phone company. Obviously, this is the largest corporation in the entire world. It is not a megacorp because it does not deal with multinationalism or vertical or horizontal acquisitions. It simply controls everything about data. While NetWatch is conceivably a very Western notion of a U.S. Euro compact of police forces, in the end, NetWatch, the weasels, they are nothing more than pawns for the true lords of the internet, the internet phone company. Taking them on means exposing yourself, your families, to what might be the highest level of risk. Some of the world's best solos and certainly some of the largest armies work for the internet phone company. And, uh, well, everybody pays their phone bills. Oh, shit. We're supposed to pay phone bills. <laughs> I would see them broken up and destroyed. Their authoritarian regime is interfering with my plans in South America and across the world. And they are a threat to the people, which is a secondary concern, but still a concern. I'd be interested to know what it is that the four of us can do to help facilitate this breakup. I have several missions in mind, the first of which is waiting for you downstairs after we are sure that you will all agree and are sufficiently compensated for your time. I don't have Suffice family. it to say that a small group of motivated individuals has often been at the center point of every revolution or regime change. It's also worth pointing out, gentlemen, this is my line of work now. Not so much kicking it around with gangs or throwing it to the uh, nomads, but infiltrating, dissecting mega corps is what I do best. It's 
good thing that we have someone oh. with that skill set then because I'm about cutting people. I uh, am sure that your pharmacological skills will be put to great use. Okay, if you say so. Dante gives you a look that indicates he does say so. <laughs> Significant PC, I say so, Glenn. I mean, he is a sociopath. <laughs> so. <laughs> Did you not just hear what I said coming out of my yes, voice? But aren't, aren't we all? <laughs> I mean, the, the thing to remember about Dante is he's a man who calls himself emperor in the 21st century. So, <laughs> well, if he's, if he's like, yeah, I do say so. You're you're gonna be a pharmaceutical. I'll just like, uh, and get my other arm out and switch it. <laughs> <laughs> right tool for the right job. I need to know before I share any more details that all of you are committed to this discourse and that you feel that you have been sufficiently compensated for such a high level of threat. I've already given you my affirmative, so... What do you wish? I mean, the money is good, so I think that if there's a high level of um, risk, then we simply increase the money commensurately. I don't have specific... Um, needs or specific wants in those respects well money is certainly nothing i have trouble coming by i will attempt to meet your demands meager as they are if you can remove gus from arasaka's stingy little grasp i'm all yours i can assure you that by the time we are done with this campaign against the internet phone company, you and yours will be under the protection of my empire. I just want information. What information in particular? There's some people from my past that seemingly want me dead. They have... What's, what's her name? What's your, what's your brother's company, uh, Pasco? Well, uh, Loss and wellness. and wellness. Yeah, connected with them. She's lawsuits and all this bullshit. I want to know what they have on me. Why they want me dead so bad. That is all you're asking for. Yeah. Very well. AP, have you ever seen the Street Fighter movie with John claude Van Damme? I have. For some reason, this guy's reminding me now of the Raul Julia Bison, like where he's offering to pay people in Bison dollars because they'll be worth more <laughs> in, his, in his future <laughs> empire. <laughs> How many BDs for a loaf of bread? <laughs> 20 million. Street Fighter is so weird, man. Pascal, uh, Dante doesn't say anything, but he comes to look at you with the full force of his gaze. How Mr. many eyebrows? There's a slight glowering. Slight glowering. Mm. Mr. Fierro, I grew up on the streets. As long as you're paying, I'll do whatever you want. So you desire only money as well? Yes. That is no no problem for me. <sighs> Gentlemen, allow me to discuss your first mission then. I need to insert one of my black netrunner agents into the internet phone company. While there is a lot you can do from outside of a facility, there is much more you can do from inside the facility. I think we can all understand that. I need more than just one facility. I need all of them. So I need to get someone loyal on the inside. My agent downstairs who you observed is prepared to, has been prepared for some time as a covert agent. You will be helping to insert her into the internet phone company at their facility 
just outside of Red Line City on the north side of town. She requires a final polygraph test and all sorts of other inspections, which is what this facility does. It's a combination solo net cop uh, interrogation facility, which will be the final step of her loyalty initiative before she begins full training. There are several objectives you will need to accomplish within the facility, but getting this Netrunner in and ensuring that she has no problems while she's there is your primary goal. There are several concerns. She, uh, in order to accomplish this mission, has a embedded cyber deck in her body, which we cannot allow to be discovered. Where's it located? That is not your concern. It is stealth covered, and we believe that there is a 90% chance it will not be detected. 90%, however, is too low. I will need you to do whatever you can to increase this odds chance. I would hope that you can go send one or two or maybe all of you in with her to disrupt this facility, their operations, and ensure the success of her scans. So Pascal being a black cyberware fixer, does he know ballpark like how difficult this is to make a stealth cyber deck more stealthy? Yeah, like the the numbers he's giving you, ninety percent are already way outside what like this must be experimental technology, what he's talking about. Something that hasn't hit the streets yet, even rumors of it. So it's probably something he's developed privately. Um, what he's talking about, just to be clear, is not increasing the potency of the cyberware. It's probably more like disabling the sensors or interfering with their operation in some way, distracting the operators, or uh, spoofing the results. Just connected to the voodoo tech we got from Alphonse. Is that what you're asking him? Sure. Okay. He says, no, no, that project will remain segmented for now. It uh, has borne out interesting, but not fruitful fruit. Just saying they had remote access cyberware, which is the first I'm aware of, so. Yes, well, we don't wish to remote access Miss Jing. Uh, we- No, but you could remote access other people through Miss Jing. That, we would need to ensure the person we were remote accessing was fitted with the voodoo technology, which you do not currently have. When is she due for this assessment? Three days on April 12th. That does not give me a lot of time to set up insertions. We I'm have sure information early. about the van that will be taking her there. Several other testees will be on it. At least one of those testees is close enough in your build, Mr. Wolfgang, that you could replace him if necessary. We've included a dossier with that man's apartment and uh, the key codes to get in. I'm more worried about this polygraph. I mean, there's not a lot you can teach someone in three days about how to lie and cheat one of those. I assure you that Miss Jing has been prepared for decades carry out this mission. I was very lucky to acquire her services. Increasing Are you saying that we do not need to worry about the polygraph? I am saying that there is probably little that you could do to prepare her further. I was thinking about actually trying to get on the staff for the polygraph. That is the kind of forward thinking that has me selecting your team for this mission. You were saying, sorry, I interrupted. I have nothing further to add. It would seem you are already creating plans necessary to get yourself into this facility and make sure that Miss Jing passes all of her protocols appropriately. Do you have any more information on the facility itself? 
layouts, staff. We have a basic layout. We believe that the staff will be very low at that time. We are going to do what we can to draw as many staff out of the facility by having several, um, how should I put this? We will be hiring edge runners to commit petty crimes across the city's grid uh, in the hopes of disabling the IG algorithms. With this, we hope to physically draw as many people out of the building as possible or commit them to a net run at that time. Uh, so in Discord, I am uploading the map of the map. That's see. very meta. Yes. That Dante can provide you with. All right. Well, I didn't check. Apparently, the file is too big to be sent on Discord. Oh, <laughs> nope. Hey, the one shoot. that's white instead of blue will upload correctly. Okay, you guys confirm that you got that? Yes. Okay, so it does not include any security information. They don't have that. You could try to go get more, but uh, it does include what the various rooms are. See, uh, and this dossier you had on this gentleman. Yes, uh, Yoshin Altman. He provides a guy that looks kind of like Wolfgang if you were drunk and squinting. Same height, same build, hair and eye color. Obviously slightly more European looking. Considering I'm German, that's pretty easy to do. Um, regarding his occupation, what is he going in for testing? Is he another net runner? He is a solo. Okay. Uh, I would rate him as being extremely average in his skills, according to his dossier. However, he has displayed a familial loyalty to the internet phone company. His parents are current or former members, uh, and his older siblings have all currently served. His brother died working for them. He mm -hmm. will almost certainly get in based on nepotistic merit. So he's a, he's being grandfathered in. Yes, okay. the Altmans are longtime supporters. Showing any sort of competency. That that is, it's one thing to try and be more competent than you are, but it's another thing to try and fake how competent you are. So, interesting idea. He is exceedingly average in all of his routines for the kind of work he does. I wouldn't hire someone like this for my corporate work, but I would certainly hire them off of the street to perform jobs for me. I see. And do you know much about the test itself? Like what is a solo expected to do and what is a net runner expected to do? I do not. I know the kind of tests that I would run my people through, but we need to get Miss Jing in specifically to learn this sort of information about internet phone company protocols. They are a notoriously information uh, opaque Well, I think the first call to action is to try and find cover entrances for the U3. If we can successfully do that, I think the chances of us succeeding this are going to be quite high. Yeah, I think there's quite a bit we can discuss when we fin when Mr. Fierro is finished with us. I have nothing further to add unless you have any more questions. Miss Jing is in my office downstairs if you wish to speak with her. Where is she staying between now and the uh, the assessment? She has a safe house apartment that is not associated with my people. I can provide you with an address. It is in a unaffiliated independent zone in the moderate district. Any indication that she's being surveilled already as part of this application process? Her uh, primary residence is being surveilled. 
and we believe that she may be followed at certain times. It was a risk bringing her here for today's interview, but I deemed it a necessary one. Uh, I expect that she will continue to be surveilled until the day of, and probably for the rest of her life, until we pull her out. Do you know if she has any family or anything like that in Redline? That sort of information is not necessary for you to have. I mean, Ms. Mercy Jing is from not the local. angle. Okay. Please know Just that. Just out of curiosity, what was she uh, known for doing that caught the eye of the internet phone company? After she came to be in my employ in Central America during the CAF conflict, I composed a identity for her with the rest of my staff. Uh, she has become a net runner known as TV who has been doing independent jobs, uh, mostly some sort of what you would consider internet counterterrorism work. Contract White work. hat or black hat? Well, it's a uh, white hat. She is intercepting the bad guys from the internet phone company's point of view. Her level of efficiency and seriousness and the professionalism she's shown has finally paid off in attracting their attention. I see. I don't have any other further questions for you, Dante. So it just kind of looks around. I'm sure they've got in in-house medical staff that I could infiltrate. So it's a corporation or low level one, but they all have their own deal. This office does have a armory and an interrogation room. So I expect that you will find they will require a medical expert of some sort, probably not the kind that you normally do, but It's a way in. More subtle than blasting. Allow me to be clear. If blasting occurs during this job, you will have failed. Uh, Miss Jing's mission, I've been preparing for the better part of a year. It's very important to me that she succeed at infiltration. Not only will this give us a glimpse into the most powerful corporation in the world, but it will allow me to advance everything. And that is very important to me. So if it does come to Blaston, would you rather us not and then just let Miss Ching get absorbed into whatever they're going to absorb her into? I would say it would be best for you to complete the job quietly. Okay. I'll leave the details up to you. All right. I think we're good to leave then. Pascal, as you're leaving, someone lightly grabs your arm and says, look, sorry about earlier. It's fine. Yeah. Do I, do I know this part? Do I recognize this person? Well, now that person? you look at them, you actually do yes. recognize them. You told me in a previous episode you were keeping an eye out for this particular person. It is the waitress who served you at the, um, at the Tapas restaurant. restaurant downstairs on the 48th floor. Uh-oh. I don't remember why I was looking for her. You, you were talking on the phone uh, or something. You were having a conversation about some topic, and she was just like butted in to say something. And you were like, I don't need you. This is Dante business. I want to keep an eye on her, Arthur. And I was like, okay, all right, well, you recognize her now. It, like You didn't recognize her when she accidentally bumped into you. 
You didn't pay any attention to her until now when she went out of her way to get your attention. Okay. I don't remember this other thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm going with it. Um, sure, don't worry about it yeah, then. Don't no, worry about no, it. Absolutely. Um, so I think Pascal kind of goggles for a second and then says, funny seeing you 55 floors up. Um, okay. She just kind of blinks at you a couple times. <clears throat> Does the blink say SOS? Uh, it does in that way that someone's like, well, I was apologizing, but now you just made it really weird. <laughs> Can anyone extract me from this conversation? Is this a YouTuber that's forced to make YouTube videos against her will and she's trying to signal the audience? Um, <laughs> no, this isn't a conspiracy. What I'm talking about. This is not a conspiracy, Dave. <laughs> Please don't bring that up. Uh, Jesus. Okay. Um, At that moment, Bones will be like walking past and like he's just focused on getting for like closer to the ground so you just kind of bulls through their conversation well listen like, dante can help you get to the ground as fast as possible if you really want to get down there 9.8 no, meters like, per second per second in <laughs> under control in my own way and on my feet uh i see uh wolfgang as you're going down the stairs you get a phone call i answer okay a voice goes what up adriano and the bio boys Hello, what can I do for you? Yeah, we got your chips here, Wolfgang. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I will be out there post haste to pick them up. Okay. He picks up the phone. Was... Okay. He's like, I, uh, you know, I was about to inquire about his mother, but that's all right, too. <laughs> <clears throat> They're professional for nomads. Mm hmm. Um, Gentlemen, I have to go pick up some uh, extra skills that I picked up recently. Why don't we you meet like in a couple of hours time to go through the plans? Well, I was thinking you could come with me and maybe bring your motorbikes out if you want to get yep. them fixed up at this point, because these guys won't be around for a while. So when you reach the bottom of the stairs, you're back in Dante's office, uh, and uh, Miss Jing just kind of stands and bows to you all as you enter. Sounds like you're just gonna keep going past. No, no, no. We'll uh, we'll talk to her. Okay. I I do the I do the appropriate uh, colloquial custom of her bowing, and then I will you know do the same thing back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Miss Jing, I presume. Yes. Uli Jing. Uh, my name is uh, Wolfgang Roth. Yes. And these are my associates, and we will be helping you infiltrate uh, the internet and phone company. I have been briefed. Have you selected a method of operations? Well, we would first like to discuss with you about your expectations as to how this will go down. You're the one with the most knowledge about this particular operation, I would say. Okay. So it would be best to get your insight. She kind of just makes herself uh, comfortable behind Dante's desk and gestures for you all to sit down for a cross from her. It's a little sure. odd. Yeah, it's like, I, well, Arthur, I'm, enjoy this while you can, I suppose. <laughs> Arthur, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that if Dante is, you know, going through all of this detail, there's no way in hell that I have any contacts inside of Internet Phone Company. That's correct. It's okay. one of the closely guarded, most serious uh internal companies in the entire world okay so yeah. i'm led to believe that you did white hat work is that correct i performed operations on behalf of the infiltration team that could be considered white hat work i did it only for my job do you have any expectations for complications that might arise? Do you have any sort of cybernetics that will be scrutinized outside of the hidden obvious one that needs to not be scrutinized? That's correct. I do not have any further cybernetic enhancements beyond that particular one. 
do you have any combat related skills appropriate for infiltration work i have several combat <laughs> she, i don't like i feel like she's trying to suppress a smile she's like yes i have several combat related skills in preparation for infiltration i've been preparing for this mission for the better part of a decade other than the tech issue with the scanning, is there any other aspect that you're aware of regarding this assessment process that you have concerns about? Questions they might ask, back information they might try to check, anything which you think could compromise you if it, if it goes ahead? I hope that you do not take this the wrong way. I believe that you all are the greatest liability on this mission, and I didn't particularly believe an outside team was necessary, but Mr. Fierro wishes to double check everything. I think you that you didn't actually answer my question. Is there that's correct. Else? I am confident in my ability to execute this mission alone, but I am willing to work with you to see its completion. I do not believe that there are any complications. I am high in confidence as to the level of subterfuge I have employed so far. Okay, so we've had a very brief look at the layout of the facility for example so if we talk about what is on the exterior walls easy to access for example there are interview rooms potentially which may be the ones they use they also they have internal interview rooms as well they have an external facing records room so there's no information that needs to be adjusted within their system that it all comes down to what you say you, you don't there's no other sort of data which needs to be edited particular to your application in advance i do not believe so all right however if anything comes up i will hope that your team will support me in altering those records yes uh so this is more to the rest of the group uh my only concern is that um if there's any whiff from the company that something untoward has happened it's going to cast a, an additional degree of uncomfortable scrutiny over the applicants within uh, the only sort of backup I could propose would be that if we we consider one of the other applicants that has to go in for this process, and if we look like our involvement is going to be exposed, that we need to plan as much evidence as possible to indicate we were supporting somebody else in the process against the best wishes of the company, something that they can then focus on, a red herring, so to speak. I'd say that if Wolfgang's going in, we throw any shade that comes down on him. I'm comfortable with that. You'll be joining plus, me, Wolfgang. Plus he plus he can sell it from the inside if things go sideways. He, he yes. I'll be a half wit solo, apparently, that is going to be grandfathered into the corporation. Uh, he apparently looks like me, has the same build as me, same eye color. It'd be very easy for me to fall into his mannerisms i just need to watch him for a couple of days yes mr altman then one thing yeah, I are you familiar see... with him what is there anything you can tell me of him i have met him several times i believe your assessment of him is generous which oh. means that if, if if you're taking his place we need to make sure that he's not going to try and take it as well between now and then no, don't worry. I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Well, I assume he's also being surveilled as well. At least his place of living. She nods. Well, we'll have to make it so that he disappears inside of his house and I come out looking exactly like him. Uh, we need a way to contact you once you leave here today. Is that possible? I believe that would be extremely difficult. Are you familiar with dead drop protocols? Yes. I will arrange one with you right now that I will not say on screen yep. because, it, because it's complicated. It, it, it'll ha all happen off screen. Of course. Yep. One thing I don't see on this schematic, where are the security offices and where are the technicians that are going to be scanning for the thing which must not be seen there are uh, there is a squad room and a sergeant's desk inside 
Is that where the techs are as well? I believe that the techs will be part of the squad room. While normally you wouldn't expect techs to be part of a uh, police organization, this is the internet phone company, and that's kind of their purpose. And the sergeant's offices are where I would expect specialists in, well, what they do here. This facility is primarily used as a sort of quick reaction force to local threats before the uh, larger contractors arrive to deal with more serious difficulties. It's also used as a repo facility. People who don't pay their phone bills are forcibly extracted to this location and their organs are harvested as necessary to pay back the phone bills. I think we should. We need to probably take a look at the facility, surveil it from a distance as best we can before we go in. It might also be worth, Pascal, if you've got any Netrunner contacts, if we need to change data, we might need somebody able, more capable of doing that or accessing their, their data fortress. It sounds like we need to split up then. I need to spend some time surveilling my target to get into his mannerisms. Ms. Jing, do you believe that the other net runners on Dante's payroll are capable of helping to override the internal sensors, or do we need to go outside for that? The facility you are attempting, I think Dante's net runners stand a good chance of being able to overwhelm it for a short term. The issue is, of course, that it could and almost certainly would be tracked back to them. The internet phone company is not a joke. They are the experts in data, and if they can track it back in some way, they will in the longest arc of time. If you truly wish to involve a netrunner in this, well, run, then I would prefer you use someone extremely competent that you would prefer not to see again and who doesn't know your name or face. Good luck. That sounds like a tall order. Well, he's a fixer and he's actually really good at his job, so this does seem like something <laughs> yeah, Pascal right. could arrange. Get, 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 getting a cutout shouldn't be an issue. I, I love the idea that every single Netrunner Pascal has ever worked with, he has personally kicked down their door and said hello to, given his track record. <laughs> what, was the, what was the name of the... Blaze Laser? Blaze Laser? No, no, one of, the, one of the teenagers, Skid Mark or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like the, the Grand Theft Auto board shows up and we're just like, oh, we could go with someone cheap. And we'll get a higher yeah. cut of the thing yeah. or we can pay for professionalism. Which one do you prefer? Someone yeah. will crash the motorbike losing $500,000. Like, yeah, well, there's this guy we just recruited and gave, us, gave a nickname to yesterday. He'll be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, All right. Uh, Miss Huli Jing spreads her arms out to indicate that, you know, Unless you have anything else, she considers this meeting over. Okay, so she gets any, up from behind the desk and oh, makes her way to the elevators. Any, I assume not, but any focus enhancing stimulants you require? No. I I am as focused as I have ever been. Suit yourself. So I, uh, as you, she doctor. leaves, I t turn to the, the group and I say, Okay, so we need to split up. How do you feel about me surveilling this man by myself? I think because it seems like the you less, guys. The less people doing it, the probably the better. So yeah. Plus, if I look like him and I'm walking around the building, it might not be as suspicious as a guy with a Militech arm shining in the middle of the night. Mm. Um. So if you are comfortable with me going off by myself and doing this, then this is something that I'll do. I mean, we're an interesting, interesting choice as mission, given we've got a, a solo and a, and a desire to keep this thing as low key as possible and a, and a doctor 
and a, a person who requires no additional stimulants, pharmaceuticals, or treatment in order to undertake their mission. But you know, things can quickly go off the rails. So, I'm I'm more concerned about how you guys will make your entry. Let me ask this you a question, is James. A... Is it ever a bad idea to bring a medical professional no, no. with you? <laughs> At the end of the day, I think the issue is that we want as few of us inside that building as possible. Yep. Every time, every time someone needs to go in, that increases the risk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I we're. I, I think look we're. Into, I could support look into from. The... Yeah. Go ahead. I think we're support from from outside. Uh, Pascal kind of fingers his new cyber deck. He says, "You know, I can I can help uh, monitor a net runner if we hire them, and look over their shoulder, make sure they're actually doing what we pay them to do." Uh, my cyber enhancements will allow me to hear what's going on in the facility if we're if we're close enough uh but i think that i think that us going in is absolutely last resort well there is one other avenue we haven't looked into we know that this guy that i'll be taking over his life as has people watching his house What's to say that um, you can't pretend to be one of these gentlemen? You're not just going to replace the guy. You're going to replace the guy keeping an eye on him. Whoa, and, 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 shit! And, and this, is, this is where my concern comes in because at the end of the day, once we no longer maintain that facade, they're going to identify somebody is missing. And then it's going to come back to the question of, well, what, what does that expose us to while this person was, no longer, was not in our control? What if we just investigate? I mean, there's a chance that they might Probably be hiring so. outside teams to do the surveillance on the outside of this. Company. I was going to check if they were using an outside team to do repo projects. Because if I know anyone in the circle, that might be a way in. That is, that is almost certainly true, Colton, that they hire people to black bag the people and then bring them to this facility to be uh, repossessed. We could get... We could potentially get two people in that way. Me posing <laughs> as repo, someone posing as repe. <laughs> ah, the old Wookie. So James is like, we need <laughs> as few <laughs> people in the facility as possible. And the rest of the team is like, we need all the players on the field. <laughs> and four NPCs. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying if they're if they're third party and like we need someone inside, we can get in. <laughs> This is more a question for probably Bones and Pascal between the two of you, but the so the only thing we know is going to be a problem right now is the the potential scanning for this cyberware. Do we know whether the operation to detect this would be something that happens for like you know you walk through a scanner and a buzzer goes off and you're detected, or whether yes, tests would have to be done? Okay, it's so it's not something we have to do wave. Test. Okay, it's like a body scanner at the airport. Okay. Okay, so it is, it is. It's not like it's someone has to go and assess the results to determine the outcome. It's like it's either it goes off or it doesn't go off straight away. Correct. Yeah, and I assume okay. there's multiple pass throughs just in case. Yeah. Well, so that might be a problem considering that both of my legs are completely cybernetic. Well, I don't well, think the problem is it's looking for a complete lack of cybernetics. You're solo. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're. That's obvious. You know, I think it's probably looking for concealed cybernetics. Right. She's trying very concerned. So she has a cyber deck that she attaches to. So she's got neural plugs, right? But she needs the stealth cyber deck so that when she's hacking into the community, the, into the mainframe internally for Dante, that they aren't like, oh, wow, one of our employees is using our own deck to hack us. Instead, it's going to be like, oh, shit, we're being hacked and we don't know who. I see. So in dealing with, millim- millim- with the millimeter, millimeter wave equipment, we either need to produce too many false positives or one false negative. So like a red herring that's inside of either myself or her. Well, I mean, you can either have it so that the device picks just constantly goes off all the time to the point they no longer believe anything it produces. Or James, that I'm so glad she you're goes here. Through. I'm, I'm so <laughs> glad you are on this cast for this mission. <laughs> Dude, yeah, listen, 
sometimes you write up these missions and you're never sure what path people are going to take. But James is like, okay, I've got Arthur's script right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please Whatever continue. Sort of Don't let me interrupt. Yeah. Yeah, or, or we find a way to make it so that is required to put in some sort of device that disrupts whatever scanning tools they have. I'm willing to put it in myself. Would I mm. would I know these kind of tools if they react to EM shielded tech? Um, they like is it a black spot? They're like, oh, there's something there, but we yeah. Don't I mean, know if you EM shield something, the the magnetic scanner I think is gonna just be like, wow, that you. That is definitely a thing. Like EM shielding prevents electromagnetic radiation from affecting what's inside it, but it doesn't stop it from. There's all it's all it's two things though. It's like it's e EMP and microwave shielded. Um, I mean microwave shielded again is going to stop you from being affected by microwave. Yeah. So it's it's not like a lack. It's yeah, not like that, a that doesn't in stealth your um your stuff. Okay, so that's not. Uh, I realize in stealth is not oh. a word, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So Pascal, you know, says, look, we have whatever, if, if Dante isn't lying to us and he really has this thing stealthed at 90%, that's beyond anything that any of us are going to be able to do. That's beyond what Arasaka and Militech can do in their highest level stealth cyberware yeah even if we by, could improve it by, by orders of magnitude even if we so could improve it by one percent we're not going to short of emping their scanners which is just a big red flag we're not going to be able to do any better with keeping this thing off their scanners what we have to do is is have a cut in to their scanners so that if it does show up we intercept the data and delete it before the techs look at it or we take the techs out and replace them so so millimeter wave scanners work like radar they send they send out a signal and they read what comes back so potentially if we can find out what type of scanner it is we can then use something like, like you know, if the person's EM shielded, so she doesn't reflect anything, but that she then transmits back the, you know, the correct, no issue found here data. Mm -hmm. um, it. Yes, yeah, proof it basically. Like if, if it if it absorbs all the radiation and doesn't retransmit it, then that that's an alarm in itself because yes. the device doesn't yep. get its reflection. That's what I was saying but, about EM shielding and microwave shielding, yeah. right? Like that would yeah. that would show up because it'd be like, well, there's a blank spot. Yeah. This, if you this do... is this should be more intelligent than that, but Dante doesn't want to take that ten percent chance that his that his stealth doesn't work as advertised. So, so... I think the the current that you'd be available is about seventy percent chance to hide most most interesting cyberware, and of course that's something you got from um, from Wolfgang too, since he has not exactly stealth cyberware, but you know his legs are not typical with that shooty foot thingy so so if there's a way to I'm, like i'm happy to find a cutout net runner who can blind their sensors for us or if you don't trust that then we've got to put someone from the team inside and do the manipulation ourselves i.e. one of us is actually running, you know, sitting at the desk and we just ignore whatever comes over the scanner. That would be the most foolproof way of doing anything. It really would. Human perception and human humans are very difficult to judge. Sometimes we might, the guy might come in and he might be off his game, you know, and he might ignore something like that, right? But given that we don't know their procedures, it's very difficult to, to even work out what that might be. Now, if we knew who was doing it, there's a lot you could work with there. You could get the guy drunk. You could get the guy high. You could bribe him. You could threaten him. 
there's a lot of things you could do, but right now, the only thing that we know for sure is that there's a 10% chance she will get flagged and that someone along the way will have that information. How we, how we stop it from getting to the right people is the important part. So I think working with your cutout might be the way to go personally, but there's also a lot of risks involved with that. Like what happens if someone notices someone else on the line, you know, then the entire thing becomes completely different. But the same thing could be said about anyone working the inside. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, might if, have to if, hurt someone. If you, if you, let's say that we get super lucky and there's a tech on their team that looks like me and you and I both go in, if, if, if his drinking buddy realizes that I'm not the guy, then we're all bones. Yeah. It could come down to a simple case of like, you held the flowers the wrong way. You know, a lot of that sort of shit happens in, in espionage work. Well, I'm going to dig into the third party repo group just to pull names. If we need to pull, need to pull some strings, then we'll have the strings in hand. It also would be good to know whether or not there is any sort of window coverage uh, that perhaps we can work with any sort of sniper support, perhaps. I'm all for physically surveilling the building if we can... Uh, Door kickers do it, too intensifies. Do it, do, it quiet, <laughs> do it quietly. I will, mm -hmm. I will say that's not my bailiwick, but it sounds like that's... Uh, Something that I'm happy to Bishop do. And Wolfgangs. Yeah, I don't, I don't know necessarily the stealth mission requires a designated marksman, but... Uh... Let's uh, we can at least have a look what our situation is. Like that that uh, fucking oh, that video from I think it's Wanted or like something. It's like it's, where he shoots the guy through like <laughs> Morgan Freeman through like the because he's got a a decoy and is sitting at his desk and all that yeah. shit. Through a train, through a donut hole, through a uh, through a fucking... wine or through a beer glass, through two windows in a car. Yep, through through a fucking uh, uh, Chris Pratt holding an energy drink, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that movie was so cool. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with James. You're gonna have an NPC drive you out to the location. It will take an uncomfortably long amount of time, and dialogue will only cover thirty percent of the ride. And then they'll inform you you'll need to use the scanner on your Kuroshi at several yeah, yellow like, portions I, on the map. I, I, I press F to skip. Right, so. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are don't know what I'm talking about, this is several parts of Cyberpunk 2077's worst missions. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta I gotta tell you, like I, I mean, sorry to decide, but I, I have never skipped a, a, a journey in a car, including the annoying ones that Claire gives you lift back to the buddy, give the, back to her her warehouse after the races, and it's like, well, you're never going to talk to me, okay? I'll just look out the window then and get my bearings for where we I've are. I've never, I've never, I've never skipped either. I skip super... after the dialogue runs out. <laughs> Do you guys have the problem with like sitting in like a car and the perspective is like really different from what you used to in the game, and it like gives you like a weird vertigo? Do you guys have no. that problem? No, but I have a problem with the NPC in the car was sitting like a foot above the seat yeah. <laughs> i don't have that problem you guys are you guys got some weird bugs uh you know the worst part of that game the delamain fucking calls all the time right? oh yeah oh, i knocked the delamain stuff out finish the missions as, as early as anymore. possible <laughs> the glados showing up that was weird man mm -hmm. so weird i did not expect that anyway. so um okay so do you guys want to get your vehicles fixed up? Because this is probably the last opportunity where you can get some extra coverage on your motorbikes. Look, I'm, I'm not worried about getting my, my motorbike armored because from the point of view that I'm never going to use my motorbike as armor. Um, Same. If it was, if it was an enclosed vehicle, then sure. Um, the risk of it getting damaged, you know, it, it's, I, I literally bought the cheapest fast motorbike, you know, and, and right. uh, yeah. So while you guys go do that, I'm just gonna go. I'll go pick up the 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 piloting chips that I have, and um, yeah, just make sure I get them done. Okay, because those will be really useful at some point in the future. Let's follow that then. Okay. You uh, you drive 
down yeah. in your newly up armored Hummer back to the mm -hmm. west side of town to the nomad camps. Yep. Okay, so one of the families that was there has left. Um, there's like four more that have replaced them, and there are a lot more semis. But because you're going during the daytime, almost everybody's asleep right now. Uh, the the Bayou boys, of course, are expecting you, and uh, Adriano is asleep when you arrive. But one of his cousins comes out and gives you the chips. So normally chips are like small squares that are transparent, and one edge of them is colored to indicate the type of chip that it is. These are not transparent. They are fully uh, black, and they have the Bayou Boys like Nomad insignia on them. Uh, at the bottom right hand corner, there's also a Snake Nation sign. So like the the Nomad Super Pack Snake Nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he turns them over to you and says something to you in Creole and then says it again in English after he realizes you don't see speak Creole and says bootlegged my brother made them they're good you're gonna drive like a nomad oh fly like a nomad okay we're good here listen is there I know you blokes blokes I know you guys uh travel around a lot what is the likelihood that you'll do any sort of running work back to red line in case i have any more need for chips like these we're done in uh four or five days our business is done family pack up we'll be back in three months for the next season no chance of you doing any priority mail or anything like that now, if you've got mail to go somewhere in the next four to five days you bring it here buy your boys take care of it for you I don't mean that. I mean, if I need to get more chips of this type. Ah, Redline City. <laughs> this transport's not good. You need nomads to get everything in and out. Unless you want to take a train from Washington, D.C. Would York you City. be willing to increase the cost to add in a couple of uh, runners to make that trip so that the chips can get here? I mean, look... We can't get it to you in like a day, but if you give us that. a week or two, we can get chips back to you. That's that's all that I needed to know. Okay. I mean, we, we have a pilot and a plane, and if we lose it, we know other families out there, we can get them to you, but no, the mail will not be priority. That's fine. Okay. As long as the chips move over here, then I don't have to wait three months for you, by, you guys to come back. So he slaps you on the shoulder and goes to shake your hand and says, when you work with the Bio boys, you're almost family. That's good to know. Thank you for your kind hey, words. You ever want to leave Redline City behind? Maybe you come join us, huh? I don't think my husband would appreciate your lifestyle too much. He's more of a caring for his potted plants and his regular TV shows kind of guy. You'd be surprised what you'd be willing to give up to live with freedom. I sort of like look lawnfully in the distance for a second <laughs> and I'm just like... The sad music from Scrubs plays. Have you ever seen that episode where they like look at yes. JD while he's memorized, like doing memory yes. stuff? Yeah. And they just like walk away from him. <laughs> he God, just says random just... things at the end of it as well. He's just like, snuffle That's dogs. That's why you can never trust a camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like that episode was just like, I didn't even think about what people <laughs> would look like doing that shit, but that's great. Uh, I need to watch Scrubs again. No, you don't. Well, at the very least, skip the last season. It's not worth it. Oh, yeah, it. no. Yeah, it's not yeah. worth it. Um, I think this is a good place to take a break. When we come back, we'll figure out what Colton, Pascal, and uh, Marcus are all doing. Friends, oh. you joined us for the first half, but will you join us for the second half? I guess we'll stick around and find out. I reversed it. See? That was good. Waka waka. <laughs> <laughs>